there's a bunch of insects pollinating blackberry bushes. They look like bees, but they're not bees. They're flies, and as pollinators, they work. In late June 2022, the deadly bee parasite Varroa mite was discovered for the first time in Australia. A month later, it was detected in the Nunna Glen region, which is 25 kilometres from Coffs Harbour. It's a renowned berry growing area. Farmers need to make sure they have pollinators. Brad Hocking is the lead horticulturalist at the Costa Berry Farm. Since for all might, we're certainly um, working a bit closer with our beekeepers uh, to make sure that they're supported in managing their, their bees and able to get good access and movement of their hives around the area. It's yet to have a, a major impact, but we do expect that it will present greater challenges for them in the management of their hive health. And so we are keeping close tabs on, on what we can do to continue to get good pollination outcomes as that proceeds. It's one of a few sites in the Coffs Harbour area which is taking part in a pollination trial using flies. Initially, we started looking at that in rubus crops and we're certainly happy to be um, yeah, progressing that now and, and looking at some really interesting alternative and future pollinators for our crops. Professor Amina Rader has been studying pollinators for 11 years. She's heading up research on managed fly pollinators. Funded by Hort Innovation, it's been running over the last four years. How many researchers have you got working on this site at the moment? At the moment, we've got a combination of teams from the University of New England and Seed Purity, and there's about eight or nine researchers. And you've got them in these tunnels. What are they doing? Yes, so these tunnels are where we have released flower flies, so there's two different species, and we're trying to compare their pollination efficiency against the managed honeybees. Right, oh, so there's honeybees in here as well? Yes. And you're not letting them interact, I suppose, because then you can't tell what, who's doing what? Yes, at this point, the first stage of the project is just to understand how efficient the flies are. And the way that we do that is by tagging flowers and putting bags on them while they're still in bud so that there's no pollen on them. And then we open the flowers, wait for the flies to visit once, twice, three times, five times, rebag the flowers and then wait for the fruit to develop and then weigh the fruit and compare that against the open pollinated, which is what the honeybee is pollinating. With about 300 flies pollinating these blueberries, the optics are quite challenging. It's disgusting to me. These are flower flies, okay. so they're very charismatic species. You are you in love them. with the flies? I do love the flies. <laughs> they're amazing to watch. They forage for nectar and pollen, just like bees. They move through the flowers, they don't sting, they're so you, hairy, they you, move pollen. You're saying that the flies are maligned and, and, and we should like the flies? Absolutely. There's a lot of species in flies, of flies in Australia, over 20,000. We don't even know much about their life cycles. So we're trying to just improve that, I guess, image of flies as pollinators. Rayleigh just came out of the tunnel and handed me a blueberry. So the question is, how do I feel about eating a fly pollinated blueberry? Pretty good, as it turns out. It's delicious. With the price of blueberries soaring in early June, the idea of having pollinators year-round is very attractive to growers. Bees don't like to work in winter, but flies do. Brad says they've had promising results and can see the benefit of using flies alongside the honeybees. We're just uh, working our way towards how we might do that in a commercially applicable scale. We're hoping to see, I guess, more consistent, reliable pollination through parts of the season where generally we see challenges with honeybee pollination. So those windows of time where we're trying to produce uh, berry crops throughout the year for a 12 month supply, but sometimes the pollination windows or the times of flowering are not ideal for honeybees. So we're hoping that through investigating and understanding alternative pollination, that we can uh, really establish good pollination outcomes for all of our crops and deliver good consistent supply of berry fruit to Australian consumers. So that's, that's an aerostylus. Yeah, okay. yep. right. We've got 10x going in here. Part of the research has been done with Tasmanian company Seed Purity, who breed the flies and bring them across the Tasman. 
Yeah. Flies go through a pupal stage. Um, so when they hatch from the egg, they form a larvae and then they develop into a pupae. The pupae is fairly inert and we can move it around quite easily. So they'll stay in that stage for about um, somewhere between five and 10 days, depending on the temperature. And that's our opportunity to move them around and deploy them. How they breed the flies in bulk is part of their intellectual property, so they wouldn't tell us. But whatever they're doing is working and they have loads to deploy. Oh wow, so, because that just looks like a beehive in there. What's in that it box? It certainly does. Um, it's taken from a beehive um, typo yep. and we've modified it a bit. So this is our pupil release boxes that you typically find when we release our flies in a crop. Um, so each layer has a, a level of pupae in them and over time they'll hatch and then they'll emerge from the front and start pollinating the crop. It's so fascinating because you hear flies and obviously you think of the, you know, the kitchen annoying fly, but you come in here and they do look like bees. They do, yes. They are a bee mimic. Yeah. Yeah, they've got the same sort of coloration and same body size and, and same activity on the flowers. So what's going to happen in here? You're going to open the box and a whole heap of flies are going to fly out? Possibly, yes. Oh, OK, cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're quite docile. Yeah, so this is the stage where they've got to harden off. So when they come out of the pupil case, they're, they're quite fragile um, and they'll sit on the walls for 24 hours or so to harden off. Using flies as pollinators is still in its infancy, but one thing that the researchers do know for sure, they won't be a replacement for honeybees. So, why flies? What makes them a good candidate for pollinating? Flies are really interesting because they're a diverse group. There's over 20,000 species or so in Australia. The different families eat different things and use different habitats. And what's even more interesting is that you've got the adult stage and the larval stage. So the adult stage most predominantly eats um, nectar and pollen and visits flowers, but the larval stages are super diverse and can range from eating decaying vegetation to manure to dead animals. There are a lot of candidate species out there. We're interested in native Australian species predominantly or species that occur here naturally. And it's a matter of working through, identifying those that will visit the crops that have potential as a pollinator. And then we take them through a stage of working out whether they're efficient pollinators, whether they carry pollen, whether they visit the flowers, whether they deposit pollen. And then once we've established that and we've got a short list of species, we actually need to be able to establish whether we can rear them if we're interested in using them as managed pollinators. But there are risks. There's the perception of flies carrying disease and introduced species becoming unmanageable. And that's something that we're really looking at carefully. So um, we need to consider where those flies already occur naturally and we need to think about other potential risks. And one of the things that we're really looking at before we move to the commercialisation stage is the potential to sterilise these flies so that we can deploy them into a crop. We know that they're not going to breed. We know they're not going to impact on the natural pollinator populations. So they're effectively a short-term pollinator and then they, they die. There's no generation coming behind them. So they're out of the system. Do you think there's an ick factor using flies as pollinators? Look, there is that perception. It's actually incorrect in, in the sense that we're dealing with a, a flower visitor here that's really no different to a honeybee. So essentially no real difference there. For now, the trials are keeping the berry farms very happy. Justin Hunley has had the fly trials on his blackberry farm for two seasons. I was a bit sceptical, like a lot of things, but I've been, been getting proven uh, wrong a lot lately in farming. The first time we, we seen some success in the first probably 15% of the crop. So that initial fruit, that the first few picks that we had was a much sort of significant size increase from the from the rest of the sort of the farm, um, just using honeybees. So yeah, the initial sort of first 15% was, was really good. Really? So you're saying that the flies created a larger... I believe so, yeah. So we could, it was evident just um, with a side-by-side -side comparison, that first sort of few weeks of, of picking was significant difference. Do you think that after the trials are finished, you would look at using flies on a, on a bigger scale? Yeah, I think we'll see how this trial goes. Like I said, the first 15% was great and I've got to sort of do sort of an economical analysis. If we can extend that out to maybe, you know, 40 to 50% of the crop, it's probably worthwhile at 10 to 15. Um, I've got to do the sort of numbers on that. In the winter, the prices are generally much better, so it might be worthwhile on that. But um, we'll have to look into that after this other trial we're doing. And if I learn anything, it's that these scientists are all 
extremely passionate about their flies. What have we got here, Abby? So, these are some native drone flies. They are a surfid fly, which is a hoverfly or a flower fly. And what they are, are cute little guys. <laughs> Love that. Everyone's trying to convince me how cute flies I'm, are. I'm trying really hard. <laughs> This one's a little bit small. It's a male wow. yep. here. But what they are is they're quite easy to identify uh, just by looking at them in the wild because they have these amazing eyes. Yeah, they're massive. They are. They're yeah. pretty big. And that's one big difference between flies and bees. Yep. Uh, a very obvious difference is that flies, a lot of their face is the eyes. Yeah. Cute or not, will the flies work as a companion to the honeybee? What makes a good pollinator? A good pollinator is one that will work the crop. It will not just collect nectar and pollen, but it will also result in the reproduction of the seeds or fruits that we're looking for. So often they're hairy because they move pollen and that helps to move the pollen. They need to work from when the flowers are open to when they close. So you need pollinators that are active in the morning and the afternoon. And then they're also, when you see about the diversity of crops we grow in Australia and the climate zones and the land use types where they're growing, we kind of need many different pollinators to fill those niches. So a good pollinator um, is one that's gonna be versatile for different crops. 